All right, thank you. Thank you, first of all, for coming in and joining us uh, for this very uh, educational seminar. Um, it's focused on identity theft, various ways uh, people are, um, you know, they are being, vic being victim of all kind of thefts going on right now. Um, the different ways you can protect yourself. So we can start right here. I have, and excuse me for my TV, it's gonna go to the... <laughs> Um, do I need your help with this? Yep. I'm not a very technical person, as you can see. So. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Well, I didn't need to move this here so that I can, you know. I can actually do it while you speak. Perfect. Okay. That'll be great. So my name is Ritika Chopra. I'm a branch manager here. My team here, Michael. I'm the service associate. And Michael actually has been uh, very, very helpful in putting this all very together. And the, the, he, he's, he's like when you when I say I'm not a technical person, he is a person in the in the branch who we throw everything to for for all kind of technical issues we are running into. So uh, this was this work was mostly done by him. Um, thank you so much, Andre. Thank Hi. you, Ritika. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah. All right, identity thefts, fraud, frauds, and scams. What kind of identity thefts are going on right now? Before I start this, let me ask you by what, how much you know about this. Um, what do you know about identity theft and how it affects you? I want to keep it like you know, very engaging <laughs> yeah. session so that we can yeah. you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I guess enough about like phishing scams and knowing like what emails are sketchy and not to open and um, you know I am pretty good about keeping or avoiding opening anything I, and finding you know exactly exactly like, like you said right now these passwords. days <laughs> yeah. always always securing your your personal information protect your uh, you know confidential information with the with the passwords not to uh, when you are doing your online banking most of us do it over the phone right now right and sometimes not do I, right? Wi-Fi <laughs> exactly <Yes. laughs> never leave your phones unattended so we have like a lot of information these days on our, on our phone all the passwords all kind of confidential information so um, Always be protective about your, your personal information. If you're using laptop, make sure even you go away f from the laptop, keep it secured with a password, um, you know, this kind of information. Okay, so like you said, identity theft is basically stealing someone's identity, could be a social security number, name, date of birth, addresses, and it's very, very easy for someone who, who who's consistently looking for this kind of information, for someone to get this information, right? Um, we have. We, I am going to talk about the various ways, which are some of the old ways, which are still active. Like a lot of people, they have their full-time job. They doing this, just doing dumpster diving, going to the trashes, uh, and yeah. Trashing, looking for the, looking for the, you know, uh, some some mails. We we always tend to throw all kind of, you know, mails, credit card offers that we don't need it into the trash. And these people who are uh, there <coughs> to steal all the, all this information, this is their full time job. This is basically like when we sit there in offices doing our work. That's what they're doing out there, right? So. This Okay, so here is, is a little bit information like how people, how much people are getting affected by what kind of activity. This is uh, based on surveys uh, out there. 67 of surveys responded that they received an email offering a large amount of money but required an initial deposit. How, how, how have, you have you been, have you see, seen any of these emails yeah. ever, right? A lot of time. And when you, it's, Okay, how how these emails can can hack your personal information? How do you think that these emails can get can get your you know data from your computers? Um, like, 
I don't know. But sometimes it just I know just opening the email gives them access to your most of the times inbox. there's a hyperlink included in mm -hmm. the emails as well. And that once you because we want to know, we, we tend to I am I'm I was really, really bad when it, it comes to the email because it most of the time looks very professional, very legitimate email, right? And we tend to um, open the hyperlink and that's when you're already too late because now all your computer, all the information stored in your on your device is at risk once you click that hyperlink, right? So um, idea is to whenever you see any email which does not make sense, there and there are many, it's, it's very, very very difficult to you know differentiate what's legitimate what's not but there are so many offers going on right now there are so many like you no know, stores if if you don't know anything about it anything sounds funny do not click on that link it, it's it's i have i personally know a lot of members in my family who have been a victim of this and obviously i'm not going to share all the stories with you but um cr crazy amount of money uh, that they lost um, it's a chime in um, on a Facebook Messenger a few years back. Um, I received a message from a random person and uh, with a random hyperlink, and I messaged the person hello, and they they said my account got hacked. So a lot of the time those Just responding to it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but um, hold on. Yeah, so sometimes just even clicking on that hyperlink or responding to that message means boom, your account's hacked. So. Um, this is just a plank where we cover the, the what like what what they do uh, with this information, right? Um, the information that they have stolen from you, they can go apply new credit cards under your name, right? And they go for shopping, and now you will be the one who would owe that much money, right? Not even knowing that. What, what then you see in a thousand dollar charge from say Alabama or California. We see this pretty much every day here people get you know they are they are being victim of these online transactions they don't even know someone charged from all the way in china and they never been to like you know china so these kind of things we see it all it, it's yeah and, and you see the other thing is that i think it's also a problem that the users themselves i mean people are going and charging for three dollars four dollars and so i mean consumer itself has brought that I'm saying that because my family also, you know, for everything you charge, and it's all this information floating around. So I think that it's just sort of irresponsibility on the part of the consumer themselves. There is so much use of credit card for everything, from $2, $3, $4. So, you know, we, we I think the consumer brought that upon themselves. You, you, you don't agree, right? Well, but you make no, a good point. Yeah. You don't agree. Yeah, that, that, is, that is so That's true. Not the, with that yeah. Fault for yeah, okay. With the advancement, yeah. like they say, uh, technology and advancements, if they have made our life easier, but they also have increased the risks uh, in our lives as well. So I completely agree with you. More, um, you know, like the, the, the easier... You credit card for everything. You right, know, right. You know. It's easy, if it's easier for us to take money at $3 from our account, that means it's easier for the hacker to take a $3 from our account. That, that's how I say it, right? But you can't steal a password for cash. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But what, um, like, yes, it, it's like... I, com I understand what you're saying, but today's world also, you know, it's, it's impossible for, for, for us to survive without these kind of transactions. Too. Because when you go to the stores, pretty much every store, there are many places which I have seen, they do not even accept cash. They, they don't even accept cash, right? And yeah. many people, they don't even um, know how to get the cash. Like I myself work in a bank, right? Um, I can't carry cash in my, my my pocketbook if i have to do that i have to make a withdrawal transaction which i normally don't do because we are we are, yeah, like we are so dependent on on these kind of debit card online transactions that this cash the safer ways yeah. are yes they are eliminating so i i understand but I'm, I'm old school so, <laughs> you know he says that but he has a bank account online account for everything at the same time but yeah, anyways but moving on so, so you're adjusting you're you're adjusting but at the same time you know what the risks are so you you will be very very protective and very careful so yes yeah. <laughs> 
So these are the demographics in which identity that often happens to. So 25, the young kids like myself who just graduated from college, they're the most vulnerable because even though most of us are broke, as the songs and poetry say, we do spend a lot more money and use our debit cards and credit cards for all like the Like what he was saying, that exactly. every one dollar, two dollar, like they, they exactly. use their debit card. And then the, you start to get a little older, 64, you know, you start to settle down a little bit and you kind of, you know, in a way, I'm not saying you, but some people do, you know, lose their guard a little bit and so sometimes people heading toward the middle aged age group are also targeted. So in 2016, 16 billion stolen, this number is expected to increase by 1 billion per year. So you can only imagine what 2017 and 2000, so far in 2018 has brought in for identity theft. So as we're taking- How many was, how many per year? 16 billion stolen in- 16 billion stolen in 2016. And they expect it to be increased by 1, million ev 1 billion every year. That, that, that is crazy, I know. Um, Chip, uh, to your point, right? So we, um, we create solutions, but we have to deal with the problems first to create the solutions, right? So debit cards, um, it was amazing. It was very, such a convenience to everyone, but it also comes with the risk of, you know, having all those fraudulent activities very, very easily. So now, since a couple of years ago, we, we came up with this chip technology. So now, with the chip, it's very difficult for, for hackers to, you know, to, to get your debit card. It, 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 it's a it's little bit safer, I would say, it throws if up not a completely if you, It throws up kind of a roadblock, if you will. It took some people, I mean, I mean, I would be in line at the grocery store and the cashier would say, uh, and a person would try to side their card because a lot of it took some stores a little while to you know integrate the chip and people would side their cards and then the thing would go eh, eh, eh. And they'd be like oh you got the chip and you know they, they would just kind of be they, they would be forgetful at first of the chip but and say oh it's such a pain and blah 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 but it, it's actually making it a lot it's a lot more difficult there, yeah. yeah so now the, even the even the devices they don't even pass you if it's a chip card so it won't let you slide. They will tell you it's a chip card, so you will have to insert the chip, but you will have no other choice, uh, which is uh, it, it's also for your protection. I know like uh, vendors and consumers, and, I mean, initially it was pain because we were not used, yeah. we were not yeah. used to it, right? People just slide their card and boom. Yeah, we were, like, I, I was getting annoyed by that. Why I have it to you know, insert the card every time and stay there for like one minute or two minutes. But um, now I'm not that much annoyed when I go shopping because you get used to things, right? Four billion records leaked according to IBM 2017, a historic 566 increase in 2000. IBM, I think I, I see them, it's a great, great company, nothing against the company, but since they are so big, they have bigger risk of, of exposing all this information from customers, right? So every year I do see numbers and it's always in billions and billions like they, the information that's been leaked from IBM. And um, I think everyone was aware of, is aware of this Equifax breach last year. That, that affected many, many people, almost half of the country, right? Um, Think about it, Equifax is, our, is a credit bureau company, which means they have everything about us, not just current information, but what we have done in past seven years, eight years, they have all history. So it's like what they breached, it, I, I'm not sure if you were affected by this, I personally was affected by this. And now every single time I would have to apply for a loan or let, let's say if even you know um, go open an account or something, Equifax gave me a special uh, security card and number, I will have to enter that, they, I will receive an email from them and I will have to enter that password. That's how the person is able to uh, do anything for them. It's annoying because um, a few weeks ago I had a need to, you know, just just start different account, just and it was a saving account, just transfer money from one bank to another because it was like you know the good interest rate. I the whole transaction took me um, two hours because we were waiting for that that uh, confirmation with that Equifax. Um, it, um, it, it's crazy what, what happened here. Uh, but like I said, like your point, with technology, it's easy, it's easy, it's, con it, 
for, for hackers to, to do all these kind of things. Um, so we Equifax is kind of like a, a gold mine for the uh, cyber criminals. All the time, right? Reach. My husband said that it was genius for someone to uh, target like, or facts. Yeah. That, that's what it is. Well, criminals have sometimes, they're the smartest people in the world and that they're also the dumbest people. So. Exactly, right? In every, every field. So now, that, now we're going to go toward the emotional stress part. <laughs> now, if life isn't stressful enough, imagine how stressful it can get when you get uh, your identity stolen. So. Victims reported emotional distress to ID theft fraud and data breach. 30%, 36%, if you will, of identity theft victims reported moderate or severe emotional distress as a result of the incident. So imagine everyday emotional distress times 10. And it happens, right? Every, every, when you're going through some things like that, that, that it's impossible for not to you know, experience that. Uh, social engineering relies heavily on human interaction. So, if you're, you know, talking to a individual about your uh, about your um, passwords and whatnot, you should never display that because con artists, people that you think you would trust, on generally may come back and stab you in the back, for lack of a better term. So, it relies heavily on human interaction and often involves tricking people into breaking normal security procedures. Like, oh, I know so and so, so I should display my password and whatnot. But uh, that person could come back and, you know, use it against you. And uh, skimming, actually, we're pretty vulnerable. All banks on Mass Ave are, and in general are vulnerable to skimming. So, they would use a small device while a person would be at the ATM and then somehow their uh, information would be presented on this skimming device. We actually had a, uh, a case where this actually happened in Lexington to our, our branch. There was a, a suspicious individual outside the branch and uh, a police officer came in and says, we, ha we have a report of a certain individual skimming and uh, he was uh, arrested and they uh, towed his car so he was caught. So again, going back to criminals being the smartest people, but also the dumbest people. So we also got some uh, phishing, smishing, and vishing here. A lot of phishing. Um, so phishing, fraudsters pretending to be from well-known companies, universities, organizations, government agencies. So you'd think these companies, oh, they have such a wonderful reputation. Um, this, this must be a legitimate email. You open it, there's a hyperlink in there. Then a smishing, our customers receive text messages, which have actually happened to me. I, I never opened them. And then um, vishing, the fraudulent practice of making calls or leaving voice messages. I'd say that one's pretty common as well. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting. Have you ever received any phone calls? Um, I used to get one all the time saying uh, it was the IRS calling and that I was going to yeah. be arrested. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm, they uh, can be really convincing. With yeah, they can tone for with me. Everything. Everything. Yeah, no, I know. They can. Right. They're intimidating. I think a lot exactly. of older people hear it and they get, you know. Like, if I would not work in the bank, you know, I would not, if I would be, you know, like, I've, I'm not seeing this every day, I would uh, get caught very, very easily. Uh, because they are, like you said, they are very intimidating. When they call, they, they literally yell at you that um, if you are not going to do this this and this, we are going to arrest you, there will be a police officer, mm -hmm. and what, like, what are you talking about? Okay, we we asked for certain information, you haven't done, you know, you haven't provided us this information. Um, and that could catch this person off guard, especially. Right, especially. The, the way the way their tone is, it can, like, a normal person can, can get, like, I know my parents, my mother, she would, like, if I told her, when I told her, um, like, if you, it would be you, you would get caught so easily because she gets so nervous every single time. And there's a, she gets nervous every single time. Um, so it's crazy. And then I believe they have had a lot of success doing these things, um, especially elder people uh, who can, you know, get caught in these kind of things. Um, so, yes, if anyone is calling you that they're calling from IRS, that um, they need certain information from you, uh, you don't have to provide anything to them. IRS people, they should have your address. They mostly talk with the documentation letters, uh, even emails these days, right? So they don't have to call you unless 
um, it's it's really really big and you have you know like some emergency going on but usually first time um, call when you receive and they are looking for something you uh, can just disconnect the phone without without you know providing anything you don't even have to argue with them so um, as I mentioned before about fishing I have a visual here um, just last week at UMass Lowell where I went to college um, my friend Tim got an email from a reliable source here security alert email membership update. So all students and alumni have an email. So due to our recent IP routine check, we have reason to believe your account was signed into from a new Windows device. And Tim clicked on the, the hyperlink there and was, and here you have a little fill in the details below and submit. As you can see, the, the grammar is completely off, retype, mobile number, password. So you can tell that that this type of thing is fraudulent and he went on social media to warn fellow students and alumni about this email phishing scam so props to Tim for yeah. saving people some money. That's a hard one too because the email address it's from is a legitimate student.uml.edu. Yeah, so yeah, to... absolutely. Um, yeah, that one, yeah, that one's definitely hard not to trust but that's how they, that's how they really win. Yeah. I, I personally had a friend actually who had been a victim of this uh, this kind of scam also. Uh, like uh, MJ had put this together. This this looks very very legitimate. Like you know you you want to enter the information, especially it's coming from look at that University of Massachusetts Lowell. Um, and how they get your information, how they get your emails, any inquiry that you have done, I have done, like I know recently I was doing a lot of uh, search on schools because I was planning to go back to school, right? And now I'm receiving the emails from different universities, different universities. You start entering the information, it's so crazy how they keep asking you, uh, you know, question after question, question after question, and you will not notice when you are already entering all your personal and confidential information into it. Um, so be careful with that. I would suggest if you have an email, if you have done any survey, but you received any, even a follow-up email uh, from any universities, don't do anything online. Always, you know, call or like do it at their center or their location. So at home, there are a few tips to keep your information secure. Monitor your accounts often, and uh, check your credit report to make sure it's correct. You know, routine checks. Sign up for email, text, transaction alerts from your bank, and store important documents securely. Do you know what this monitor your credit score? Because I want to understand that what like we where we you can go and check your free credit scores. Because it's also very risky to find out where we can go for the reports. Because that there are a lot of scams going on. Just this research also. I know, but he might not know. It's isn't it like annualcreditreport.com? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Once, once a year. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's yeah, a I one. space enough three and a half months so I can get. One. So you get one, yeah. one every uh, that three months. True. That's true. It's annual and it's free. It's what per one copy you can get for uh, free per year. And you want to uh, make sure the company that you're looking for, there is a list of companies that we can actually uh, provide you. We have put together um, all the slide and other additional information. So only go through those selected uh, recommended companies uh, because if you Google uh, about how to get my credit report, there are another like series <laughs> of you know well, <laughs> fraudulent yeah. yeah website. I've gone to all, all manner of websites, and I never thought about that. <laughs> but my free credit, credit report is one, one of the genuine ones. Also, text security alerts uh, on your online banking. Every time you have any transaction, uh, which which is not your usual activity, you will receive a, a security alert, even a text message, which is very very useful. I have it on my phone, um, and it's. Always, you know, it's it's very helpful. Um, and even even just simply having a, a text alert, like when you deposit something into the bank, or um, or withdraw something. Like I have my my bank set up. Like whenever there's a large deposit going in, I say, okay, everything's accounted for here, and I always download the mobile banking so you can see every transaction just to make sure. Do you, do you mm -hmm. do online banking? So you see everything real yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. 
real important. And you have online banking as well, right? Yes. yes. And yeah. obviously, you will be pro more um, careful than her, I would say, the, the way you're saying, you know? No? <laughs> the way she does more than I do. <laughs> My father-in-law was a victim of this, uh, this mail fraud that he won a lottery, right. and it was wow. years, years ago, and he lost almost 30000 30,000 because the person who was involved uh, they wanted him to deposit initially uh, 500 or I, I forgot the story the 1,000 uh, to initiate and he was so tempted to do that um, I I was not I was not his daughter-in-law at that time to educate <laughs> him I just wanted to be clear but he, he was he was so tempted to do that and then he went um, to you know whatever they needed him to do and then they asked for more money 15,000 then they asked for they kept increasing it he lost 30,000 that's when he realized that okay this is scam and I mean, we he 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 always remember that thirty thousand and like talking about the emotional stress, Heart right? Yeah. He, yeah. It, it's painful. Yeah. But now he is more careful than even me. Whenever it comes to online banking, uh, doing the transaction, when you go to he goes to the teller, uh, teller, and then this is something I also recommend you doing that. Someone, sometime you know you forgot your debit card, you don't have your account number information, S a teller or anyone asks you to provide that information, if, if you have to say it um, verbally, I would suggest take, a, you know, like make sure that no one is listening to your information. I personally uh, would uh, recommend writing it down at the piece of paper and not need that information. Uh, either you shred it and make sure it's shredded or make sure it's shredded afterwards. Mm -hmm. He does that. He's very careful. So this is something kudos to him after losing 30,000. Yeah. <laughs> Even behind the teller line, we have to be 100% about shredding documents, any account numbers left out, or they can't, any auditor that comes in would mark us down for that. So anything addresses, um, account numbers, we, 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 need, we, we basically leave no stone unturned. When it comes to that type of so situation. after closing the branch, we spend literally like ten minutes checking every spot. Even the my my office where I hardly sit, um, you know, I would not even go in there for weeks. I we we check if it's locked, if no paper, uh, no information is is out there. So uh, we've got online fraud prevention checklist. So. Keep current with your software and virus protection, PC and Macs. Create strong passwords, so don't go with something that any Tom, Dick, and Harry would have, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because chances are somebody probably has that password. Um, ignore emails from senders you don't know, like as I may have seen, shown you before, even though those are trusted. Like, you like always, always look, cast a uh, critical eye. Use your pop-up blocker, download files from only sites you know, and sign up for email, text, transaction alerts to keep track of your purchases, as I mentioned before. Anything to add, Ritika, to that? Um, no, uh, in addition to this, um, I, I just wanted to, uh, to, I know the debit card, we cannot always, you know, we can never be more careful with that. Every time you go out, even if it's out of city for a little while, I know a lot of customers, they don't like it when they go travel outside and their debit card gets blocked uh, and then they call us and then they're not happy, you're not a good bank. Uh, it's for your own security. Get you used to it and see this as a, as, as a security, as a, you know, like it's, it's a protection for you. And also whenever you go out to travel, it's try to notify your bank. Let them know where you will be traveling, uh, what days you will be going, where you will be going. That is very helpful for your bank to I had make a sure that a customer you today that did that actually. So we usually add a note that customer is traveling to such and such country, uh, say uh, Ireland for example. So we would punch in the notes, customers traveling to Ireland from 216 to March 18th because they want to be there for St. Patrick's Day. And um, so we would also add a fraud, a, a fraud exclusion, which would include the, that. So if they use their debit card in another country, it won't look suspicious because a lot of things can happen abroad. Exactly. 
exactly. And then most banks, they do require you to do that. They, um, it's just that, it's just a matter of habit. A um, lot of people, they're not habitual of doing this activity. So when they, they realize it when, it, when they're already out there, and now they're calling, and sometimes it's not time, you know, time difference between the time zones, it could be a problem too. So now you can't hold up to someone in your banking institution. So um, not, not a very convenient way to uh, spend your vacation. Um, we can we can notify the banks and it will be really helpful. A mail or phone fraud, take it away. So be the phone fraud. Like I said, I think we covered this part. Mm -hmm. When someone call you, they don't. You are not calling Eastern Bank. You don't. You know that it's it, it's someone calling you. They, you have no idea to verify if this is Ritika Chopra from Lexington Bank or if it's MJ. Never provide any information. Doesn't matter how much, how critical we, we make the situation for you, how important we make the situation for you, that your account will be closed if you don't do this and this. Um, hang up if it's that important. You can hang up and you can dial. Um, I always do that. if. Macy's or other credit cards that I have and then if there is something going on they call me um, and they ask me it, it, most of the time it's a legitimate call they, they, they need some information some verification but I always like hang up and I ask them that I will have to call you back on this and this number now that I have peace of mind that okay you even if it it's you know you like I said you can never be more, yes, more Sometimes you get those uh, already message calls that say, congratulations, you've just mm -hmm. won a free trip to the Bahamas. Enter your uh, credit card information now. <laughs> I got I one of those. Your I'd, be, I'd be right in there giving my number. <laughs> free trip. I'd be like, yeah, there's, there's a catch. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, just, yeah. you just want to defraud me. And you know what I'm surprised at? That how many numbers they, they can claim. Because every time I get this, I block this number. But they somehow can have so many numbers available. Now this person is, this Jackie is calling me again for such and such. Didn't I block 10 of your contact numbers already? This is, this is what amazed me. So as we mentioned before, travel smart, <laughs> travel safe. Um, I've heard in some areas of Europe, um, there are people that, you know, my neighbor, Kathy, she went to, um, I forget where she went, Italy and uh, somebody pickpocketed her. So always have your wits about you when you travel. And again, with the note card numbers, balances, issue phone numbers, and keep them in a safe place. Uh, and don't leave your cards unattended. Um, so if you're ever at a bar, always, once you pay, put your um, card back in your wallet, put it away. I actually had a little bit of a scare in Boston a few weeks ago. I was out with my friends at this uh, at this place, just, just getting together. Um, because we hadn't seen each other in a while. So I get to the train station and I do the phone wallet keys check and I realize, oh no, I don't have my wallet. So I literally power walked all the way back to drink. And my wallet was there, but, and, uh, but I kept a close eye on any, anything, anything I did because in that time period, somebody could have found my wallet, found my debit card, and thankfully it was in good hands, but again, I tend to lose my debit card everywhere, all the time, my pocketbook, I do that a lot. I think with the technology uh, going on, I can see that if it's not coming, maybe I would invent that, that you would have a chip in, uh, you know, uh, inserting in your, in your, in your skin or something, that would be your, you know, your debit card, now you can't leave it, right? Yeah. Scan your hand or something, I, I see it possible, it's, it, and an I'm An invention of the future, I mean. How, how would they how would they steal you? I mean, if they wanted your credit card information, they'd have to hack your hand off, hack your hand, <laughs> kidnap you, or something. <laughs> That's even worse. Take my card. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did, did you talk about? I, I was actually doing some work back there when you guys were up here talking. Um, did, did, earlier, did you talk about those those terms, fishing and fishing? We did actually, and I showed them. Yeah, we learned all, all that stuff. Fishing terms. Mm -hmm. I, Fishing is what? Is that a? It's when um, you know you get a you bogus get email. Bogus email from a well-known or reputable organization. I know I this isn't really part of the consumer side here, but uh, I'll tell you a little story just to underscore how bad people are. Um, I sit in that little office there. I do wires for folks, right? 
come in and got to wire money here and there. One of our very good customers came in, somebody I know, and she said, we've got to get this wire out this afternoon before the wire room closes. I said, okay, that's not abnormal. So I started inputting the information she gives me. It was like a $36,000 wire. And it was going, and I'm, as I'm putting it in, I'm not sending, it's, this is a corporate wire from a business. It's not going to a company, it's going to an individual. So part of my job is to, to try to cause the bank not to lose money on bogus wires. So I, I, I started asking this lady, what's this $36,000 going to so-and-so Bank of America account in Alabama? And she said, well, I don't know. Boss told me to get this thing out. But what happened was, um, so I, didn't, I, I felt pretty uncomfortable about the whole thing. Boss sent her an email saying, we've got to get this wire out. And she showed me the uh, email, the internal email from her boss, and it did not look like anything this guy would write. I know enough about him to know he's, he's literate, he, you know, and it was a terrible email. And what happened was somebody had co-opted, stolen his email address, and tried to initiate this wire under his thing, his bank account. He had, had 36,000 multiples of that in the corporate account. Um, and it came with all this, and, and, and he said to this woman, Mary, Mary, we got to get this out right away. So she came charging up here from the business, and she was very upset that I was kind of laid back about it and saying, well, let's look at this a little more. Found out we, we probably shouldn't have done that. We didn't do it, and um, saved them 36,000 bucks because it was going to some, I'll call her a mule, you know, some hireling in Alabama with a checking account who would have gotten that wire. The money's available instantly clean it out and go home, you know? So it happens right here. Yeah. And uh, with our good customers, we should, should know better. It reminds so me of that there. movie, Catch Me If You Can, of yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> like, you know, it, it's a very, very good movie. But like, like we talk about new, new advancement, now have a more uh, ways, you know, we are more prone to this uh, scam. But older days, it still was there, right? And it was even difficult to catch these kind of people because over there we, they did not have a lot of technology or resources. Uh, so this guy is being a doctor or this guy is yeah. being a... Then the comedy identity yeah, thief yeah. too. So he's, they, he's, a pie, he's being a pilot. And it's uh, based on uh, <laughs> true story. So yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is funny. And uh, there's another movie um, talk, talking about phone scams. There's more, um, more blackmailing, more of an independent movie, uh, Compliance. So um, these fast food workers, uh, they get a call from the police department, and um, somebody he says, uh, one of your employees, so and so, has is stole from a customer, and uh, he ordered the boss to strip search the employee, <laughs> and it was actually based on a true story that uh, happened in Kentucky back in the early 2000s. So, so you always got to be wary of who calls, who they claim to be, just uh, driving that point home. So on the topic of movies. <laughs> so, uh, and deceptive marketing. Uh, marketing, I'm not saying marketing people are bad, but uh, marketing is definitely a uh, unfortunate venue for some of these scams. Um, what, what you thought was a free trial and found out months later you've been getting billed for it each month. So even with companies, say Apple, say, um, with uh, say uh, Apple, Apple Music. Music, exactly, they'll be like, sign up for it. your first thirty days is free, or or such and such is is uh, free uh, for the first thirty days, and then suddenly, a couple of days go by and you're being billed mm -hmm. like crazy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, you may not adequately convey that you need to opt out before the end of the trial period to avoid a recurring monthly charge. Always read the fine print, all the terms and conditions, and. Uh, Beware of any uh, free trial that requires a payment card number. Um, pre check boxes, so review statements for unauthorized and unusual activity. Um, this actually reminds me of a TV episode I saw, uh, a family guy. So um, the, sal <laughs> the salesman walks up to uh, the main character's door and he says, Sir, uh, do you have uh, volcano insurance? So, <laughs> so he ends up <laughs> getting the volcano insurance and uh, gives away his wife's rainy day fund. And uh, he doesn't even read the fine print. And when, his account when the main character's accountant comes, he looks at the document and it, all it says is volcano insurance 100 different times. And, and then at the bottom it's like, 
oh my god, he's signing it, he's signing it, I can't <laughs> believe it. So that, that's, that's, I guess, a... Um, lesson more, to read fine print. Uh, yeah, <laughs> lesson to read fine print and just, you know, the daily uh, <coughs> media reference because, you know, that, that actually does happen. I mean, I'm sure Family Guy uh, did it to, you know, make its audiences laugh, but it is, it is a uh, real life problem. Um, take it away, Tika. Yes. Um, so, how other ways you can avoid these kind of thefts, right? Um, ATM receipts, your credit card, bank statements, always shred them. Always, always shred them. Um, when I was new to USA, my husband uh, had this shredder machine in India. I, you know, I, I, we never cared about these things. Um, I was young enough not to see all this kind of stuff. So when I see that. Uh, I need to trash this. This is this is occupying this space, and it looks ugly. I don't want this machine in my house, right? <laughs> uh, and we and him, like we always get in an argument of like why this this is so important. Now working in a bank, I understand that how important that is. Always shred it. You don't have a shredder, make sure you cut into different different pieces, and. They say recommendation is when you cut a debit card or a statement, throw it. Do not throw it in one trash bin. I do that. Yeah. I right. Three Scatter words. it everywhere. Like throw it in different ways. Even when you're not sure, I have my own personal rule. When in doubt, shred it. Even if it's even if you don't need to shred it, it's always good to have that sort of mindset, if you will, because even if you're not sure, I mean, always, you know play on the safe side rather than keep it laying around. Okay, so um, never provide information over the phone unless you have made the call. We covered this already. Reconcile account statements regularly and uh, with your online banking, we covered this. You could set up you know, uh, ways to do that. Uh, review your credit uh, report regularly. Once a year, we talked about the companies and the information, additional information is in, your, in, the, in the printouts, which companies you can actually um, you know, go to. And uh, we have an Eastern voice recognition. That's another way. Uh, I'm very sure all the banks have these days. Uh, that's your voice recognition. Uh, another setup, um, you know, to to assure that you're not being a victim of any of those frauds. There's another. Um, forgive me if I you've already heard this, but there's another very successful uh, uh, gang of thieves in the United States, but also very much in in Massachusetts, and we get. We get alerts from our security department quite frequently. They're called, we call them the Felony Lang, Lane Gang. They're organized. There are hundreds of them. They're like gypsies. And their targets are cars. They're not stealing the cars. They're stealing the contents. And they break into cars that might be at a soccer match parked at a field where the mothers are out there cheering on the kids. They bust into the cars and get their handbags. They get everything on the people. And then they proceed to write checks that are bad because they've learned where the folks live. They very often get checkbooks in the pocketbooks, IDs and things. And they're so sophisticated that they, they, they get the photo IDs and they have enough people in their gang to be able to find somebody who kind of looks like that person in the ID. And if he doesn't exactly look like him, they put a wig on him and they make him up. And the lane part of the felony lane gang name is they use drive-up lanes, and they always go to the outermost lane at the mm -hmm. back because the teller can't see them, right? And the cameras aren't great. And they steal oh. millions of dollars, millions, and it's because people leave their handbags on their seats, under the seat, yeah. they'll find it. So that's just, it's going on right now, exactly. right here in Lexington. I told them about the card skimmer that the police apprehended too. Oh. Uh, back in, what was that, when was it, September? Oh, no, fairly recently. Yeah. Even more recently than that. Yeah. Scott skimming, it, it's, it's not a very uh, popular uh, way uh, these days because of the chip. So it, it has made it really difficult for these <coughs> people to, you know, to hack these kind of things. But again, these people who have their full-time job, they can always come up with the new stuff, you know, new ways to do that. Yeah, so uh, back to, to rehash elder fraud for every reported case of elder financial exploitation 43 go unrecognized and it's costing them 2.9 billion a year so let's get ahead of fraud and scams kind of as a as a um, inspirational message if you will mm -hmm. and, uh, 
So the biggest um, elder common types of fraud targets, so it's usually, and this is kind of an unfortunate statistic, theft by family members and caregivers. So these are the ones who shouldn't be taking advantage of their family members and those under their care, but they are, unfortunately. And it's actually less by strangers, power of attorney, affinity, risky financial products, exploitation of home equity, so poor or overpriced financial products. So in a way, this is unethical as well as, you know, a fraud issue, so. And this is very, very unfortunate, right? Like when, when, when our, your family members, didn't we have a situation um, today um, with our customer also, right? Uh, when, when she is a victim of this uh, uh, abuse by a family member and now she is uh, paying for this debt, which is crazy amount, over 20,000, and it's uh, been six years that she's been trying to pay it back. For, for someone who she cannot report to police because it's a family again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so not, not, yeah. Yeah, not good, mm -hmm. right? So um, why seniors are targeted, as I may have mentioned before, they're more of a vulnerable population and trusting. Um, I know Mike's not trusting, <laughs> but. Not uh, trust. <laughs> um, and they're lonely. Yeah. Very often. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, just as the younger generation, they may have trouble identifying fraud. So, older seniors especially find it harder to end telemarketing calls and somewhat reluctant to seek advice. Yeah, sometimes they don't even, you know, like they, there's, there's not much advice available for them as well. So, um, you know, they don't. They don't know who they can talk to. They don't know what uh, new advancements, what innovations they have available, and who they can you know talk to. Because every everything is online these days. If you have to take advice, um, it's it's online. You you exchanging emails. Uh, so elder people most of the times they don't. They are not very you know user friendly with all these kind of things. So they have limited resources to uh, get help um, in these situations. It just so each year, seniors lose millions of dollars, um, 2.9 million as 2.9 billion, as the previous slide said. Simple tips on preventing some scams: um, If you ever say get a call saying you're a winner, like I mentioned before, that says you have won a free vacation to the Bahamas or to um, Barcelona or something, don't pay any money to collect supposed sweepstake winnings. Legitimate operations won't require you to pay to collect your winnings. It's against federal law to pay a foreign lottery, and never wire money to anyone with whom you are not familiar, as Mike said before. Never provide anyone with personal information, such as bank accounts, PIN numbers, social security. Check any unfamiliar area codes. Be aware that there are th many three-digit area codes that cannot call us through international phones, especially 876. If you do not have caller ID, consider adding it to your phone service. Caller ID allows you to add a caller intercept feature that screens calls and offers the option to reject uh, suspicious international calls. My parents actually have that set up. And, uh, and also too, at the end here, contact your local authorities. The police, I'm, police in uh, Lexington are very good about They're very uh, helpful, yeah. They're very helpful. Good with, town, uh, we have good, good people here. Yeah, okay. and a lot, and especially in this town, you don't really see a lot of violent crime. You see more white collar crime, such as fraud and whatnot in the surrounding towns too. So, any final questions? No. <laughs> Thank well, you. All of this stuff sounds like, you know, who would do that that kind of thing? Who would be dopey enough to yeah, pick up the phone and, and, and give them information just willy-nilly over, over the phone? But they do it. Yeah. And, and statistically, they're it, it's, a, it's a and people are very trusting, you know. Well, that's Somebody it. They call, you know. Yeah, people yeah. are trusting. That's yeah, the, they're interested. They want to know what yeah. what they're missing out on, and yeah. so it's just it's kind of just yeah. taking a step back and, and thinking a little bit about it. And I like Ratika's advice earlier, which is you get a call, unsolicited call, and we make calls all the time, don't we? You know, telling yeah. folks that their account is. not could be repaired or something. <laughs> and, and, well, um, really repaired. We, yeah. we try to help well, people with their financial needs. I mean, yeah. we're, 
or we well, try to be you know, put some money in your account. But there are people who are pretending to be us and you know, like yeah. taking advantage but of call the bank back. back. It's a yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah. Don't assume it's us. Yeah, yeah. banks are also a good resource if you guys. We're especially a very accessible bank, and we're a very transparent bank. So if you guys ever need help with anything related to the subject matter, we can. Mike, Ritika, myself, will are definitely uh, and always Teresa, willing. You know Teresa, of course. Yeah. Always ready, off. willing, and able to help our uh, yeah. our valued customers. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. That'll Thanks. be all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.